。第三十五对演讲题目是 Number Three， 计时开始。Taiwan's healthcare shines. We leave no one behind. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Taiwan is known for a great healthcare system. The Nobel Prize winner Paul Krugman once said that Taiwan's health insurance system is the best system on earth. With the advanced medical technology, Taiwan not only benefits our nation but also makes global contributions, especially on safeguarding global health and building medical capacity, curing rare diseases, and cultivating medical personnel. In 1997. Taiwan began to seek invitations from WHA's annual meetings, and was finally invited as an observer in 2009. However, under political pressure, Taiwan didn't receive invitations for both 2017 and 2018. So, how can we promote ourselves to gain support from the international community? Let us work on my teammates to share with your ideas. Natalie, please. Thank you, Wayne. Taiwan plays a significant role in safeguarding global health. Taiwan's well-known medical teams have seen service in Africa, Asia, Central and South America, and the South Pacific. For example, since 2005, Taiwan has offered short-term assistance in Papua New Guinea. The assistance from Taiwan trained local doctors and taught them advanced medical skills. After four years. The local physicians were able to successfully cure the patients on their own. Besides sending medical teams, Taiwan has also helped patients with severe diseases but unable to afford medical expenses start new lives. Lo is a 14-year-old girl from Vietnam who suffered from elephant leg disease. Fortunately, she received financial support from a Taiwan company and in turn underwent complex surgeries in Taiwan, which saved her leg from amputation. She finally fulfilled her dream of walking and owning a pair of shoes. The above-mentioned examples are all selfless contributions Taiwan has made. But there's more. Michael, please. Thank you, Natalie. Besides offering medical care, Taiwan has been making efforts to cultivate medical personnel. Dr. Wei Fu Quan is a world-renowned surgeon specializing in reconstructive microsurgery. His expertise attracted foreign surgeons from all over the world to study under him. Over the past 25 years, Dr. Wei's center in Changgeng Memorial Hospital has trained more than 1,700 doctors from 77 countries. Moreover, an international workshop on laboratory diagnosis for enteroviruses was held in Taipei, organized by MoFa and the American Institute in Taiwan. The four-day event brought together 31 experts from 15 countries in the Asia Pacific. In the workshop, Taiwan demonstrated our medical capacity, and the workshop also underscores our determination to contribute to the controlling of infectious diseases. So, how can we make Taiwan's voice be heard through new media? Sandy, please. Thank you, Michael. With multiple pathways, we can show Taiwan's strength to the international community. First, what Taiwan can do is spread medical knowledge through social media. Facebook has launched a satellite providing internet since 2016, reaching 14 countries in Africa. Since then, the population of internet users in Africa is increasing year on year. This is one of the pathways Taiwan can take advantage of. With the wide use of social media, we can spread healthcare information to almost everywhere in the world in order to enhance global health literacy. Second, Taiwan can record our contributions through videos. The story of Lone, the little girl with elephant leg disease, was made into a microfilm by MoFa as a promotion of Taiwan's healthcare to WHA. The story has reached two million clicks and resonated with people across the globe. Lastly, we can promote Taiwan by offering our expertise and training medical personnel. Dr. Wei Center in Chang'an Hospital is a prime example. It not only raises the quality of doctors worldwide, but also enhances Taiwan's visibility. Back to you, Wayne. Thank you, Sandy. It is true that Taiwan is under political pressure, but we are still actively promoting participation in the World Health Organization. However, Our contributions to safeguarding global health, 
showing our medical expertise, and spreading kindness will not be neglected. Through social media, stories of contributions, and cultivation of medical personnel, Taiwan can gain support and its strengths can shine on the global stage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with hands that cure and hearts that care, let us bring Taiwan to the global stage together. Thank you. Our topic today is what role can new media play in our effort to promote diplomacy? The purpose of diplomacy is to strengthen the state, the nation, or the organization it serves. Diplomacy is accomplished by debating or bargaining. Generally, in a group of negotiations, what you ask for is more than what they expect to get. Needless to say, diplomacy plays a vital role in international relations. Because without being diplomatic, you can't protect your nation's interests, and neither can you work with other countries. Before 21st century, people received news only through a newspaper or the radio. Now, with the advance of World Wide Web, people can have interesting conversations. How does new media, such as Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, the so-called social media work? What differences does it make? Is it a tool? to help us, or is it a weapon that is against us? Now, let's welcome Aaron to give you more details. Thank you, Zoe. In my opinion, I think new media has its pros and cons, but you may wonder what is the cons. Well, I think new media turned out to be a tool for China to bully us online. You know the essence of new media is to dig dirt. Some dirts are true, while some dirts are fake. As for me, Taiwan is an independent country. This is the true dirt. But Taiwan is only a part of China, which is a fake dirt. With the help of the internet, the great Chinese people called us. We are one of them. They spread untruthful information about Taiwan in any time, anywhere, to anyone who is leaking on the net. What's worse, we cannot defend ourselves quick enough, fast enough, and strong enough. In other words, new media turned out to be a weapon against Taiwan. Worst of all, there are no regulations about new media to spreading fake dirts. Now, let's welcome Cindy. Thank you, Aaron. I think new media could be the good ways to make the world see us. There is a saying that goes, we walk out and let the world come in. We cannot compete without the advantage of using new media. Nowadays, online communities grow bigger and bigger. Through the online communities, we can not only learn domestic news, but also international news. And there is an emerging profession called YouTuber. YouTubers work include making videos and vlogs then upload the videos to YouTube. In other words, it is a good idea to use YouTube to let people from all around the world see us. We can arrange some activities like introducing our native culture, taking them to the night market, or Latin experience more Taiwanese lifestyles, so that they can learn more about Taiwan. They also can recall the film while the event is taking place. When the journey is over, they can upload the videos to YouTube. In this way, more and more people from all around the world can know Taiwan. Now, let's welcome Emma to make a conclusion. Thank you, Cindy. The internet has a greater impact on people today than ever before. And the use of social media websites creates a platform for discussion where information can be exchanged among individuals. And with millions of people worldwide now using the internet, promoting our diplomacy is as simple as one easy touch away. The ease of access and growth makes it very beneficial for everyone to make themselves heard or understood. As social media evolves, communication will improve and continue to soar to new heights. New media represents a new means for the world to see Taiwan, come to Taiwan, and appreciate the beauty of its people. New media is handy, helpful, practical, functional, and an inexpensive way to introduce Taiwan to the universe. It is high time that we make wise use of it immediately. Thank you for listening.
第三十一对表演演讲的题目是 Number One， 计时开始。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Diplomatic work is the foundation of a country's stability. Through diplomacy, not only can useful ideas and technologies be exchanged, but it can also strengthen our nation's relationship with other countries. Therefore, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs jobs are essential. To the average citizen, a lot of our government actions can be mysterious. Or done behind closed doors. As a high school student, I always wonder what our diplomats' jobs are. I believe they have to assist in formulating effective foreign policies, negotiating with other countries to achieve agreements, and establishing a strong tie between Taiwan and our alliances. However, diplomacy doesn't only affect government officials; it also affects our daily lives. Any small changes in the policy towards other countries may have great impact on the way we do business, travel, or receive education. Later, through my partner's elaboration, we'll have a better understanding of how diplomacy affects our lives. Thank you, Bingjie. We are living in a highly globalized society where information travels fast. Every decision governments make. And the strategies they employ in their diplomacy impact our lives. When a country has good foreign relations, they can cooperate with other countries, share different cultures, and create more possibilities. For instance, the diplomatic success of Taiwan allows us to travel to 119 countries without needing to apply for a visa. That increases the convenience of traveling and saves a great deal of our time and money. Moreover. Through the new southbound policy, it creates more job opportunities for people from both Taiwan and Southeast Asia. Through frequent interaction, it also helps the communication of different cultures and core values, which enables us to have a broader international perspective. In addition, with a more cooperative relationship with other countries, it provides more chances for the entrepreneurs in Taiwan to establish businesses internationally. Which could help with our economic growth. That's right, Alex. Foreign policy is crucial and beneficial to our daily lives. However, at the other end of the scale, when the country has poor relationships with others, the people may suffer from great loss. Let's look back at history. The Cold War between the Soviet Union and the U.S. led to a severe arms race. The political tension of the two powers not only threatened each other, but also the global security. More recently, the trade war between the U.S. and China will result in higher prices for consumers in both countries. We can also look to North and South Korea as another example of poor diplomatic relations. In the last 50 years, they have had very little economic activities with each other. And live in constant fear attacks. To avoid these kinds of conflicts, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs plays an important role when it comes to negotiating with other countries. By negotiating, both countries can minimize the negative effects that the nation and their people may face. Exactly, Cindy. We all see that diplomacy is a core element to consolidating a country's sovereignty. Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Always puts a hundred percent of its effort to ensure our sovereignty is solid. Also, every diplomatic policy plays a significant role in our daily lives. Through successful negotiations, the citizens of Taiwan can enjoy the benefits of our visa waiver programs and travel to 190 countries. By promoting the new Southbound policy, we can exchange highly skilled professionals. Cultures and techniques with our target nations. Due to these factors, the boundaries among the countries is eventually fading. On the contrary, if the diplomatic policies aren't set up appropriately, it may lead to serious conflict between nations. Furthermore, it may result in deadly wars that cause casualties or major economic crises. 
Although the diplomatic situation is tough for Taiwan nowadays, as long as we have faith in our country, we believe we'll find a breakthrough point for Taiwan's diplomatic work. And we, the hope of Taiwan, will surely lead Taiwan to a promising future. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What did you think the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs would be? Well, we see it as twofold. Take the country to the world and bring the world to the country. That is, the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in our opinion, would be to promote Taiwan as a worthy member of the world's nation, as well as creating a more friendly environment with the entire planet. Therefore, Taiwan will make contributions to the international community and share peace and prosperity with the entire planet. Next, we'll have Cindy tell us how its work affects people's everyday life. Thank you, Jake. Diplomacy could affect many aspects of a country's economy, which are highly relevant to our daily life. By joining international organizations or building partnership with other nations, we can not only secure better market opportunities for Taiwan, but also improve the international trading environment. And this will ultimately bring benefits to the people. For instance, lower tariff barriers will be likely to be achieved, and the common market with favorable conditions will be created. This could lead to lower prices of imported goods and also increase the export business of local products. And as a result, we consumers could buy high quality products at lower prices, and our export business will also be boosted. And now we have Vivian tell us more. The Ministry's work is about diplomacy, which should be able to facilitate exchanges and therefore create more opportunities for people to cross the country's borders and reach out to a wider world. For example, with scholarships for exchange students or exchange talents, the young and the professionals are given the chance to increase both international mobility and competitiveness. More young people and professionals in many fields will actively engage in diplomacy as well. Moreover, reciprocal relations with other countries should be built to benefit the respective populations. The Visa Waiver Program is a living example. Visa free treatment provides more convenience for people who intend to go sightseeing or take a business trip overseas. This practice could boost a country's tourism and also help to break the country's barriers, reaching more mutual understanding between countries. On top of that, to create an international image for Taiwan is also essential. And next we'll have Nina elaborate on that with her personal experience. My personal experience in Vietnam made me realize how important it is for a country to create an image for itself internationally. Once, I participated in some volunteer work, aiming to provide medical support to remote villages in Vietnam. I was shocked by the fact that the people there have some negative perceptions of Taiwan, such as the medicine from Taiwan may not be safe. It was very disheartening when we went there with purely good faith, but were treated with outright hostility and mistrust. I couldn't help but wonder what went wrong with the images of Taiwan. We believe the solution to the problem is to foster mutual understanding between countries, and this can be best achieved through diplomacy. Through diplomacy, a country will be able to showcase itself on the international stage. And through diplomacy, the ministry could promote Taiwan as a brand and redefine the way the world sees us. We believe people there will eradicate certain stereotypes and look at Taiwan from a totally different perspective. Next, we'll have Jake conclude our speech. Thank you, Nina. No man is an island, 
and no nation should be either. In this growing global village, where every nation is highly interdependent on each other. Diplomacy is a way to strengthen the connections between countries. The ultimate goal of diplomacy can be characterized by the image of great unity, the world of peace and harmony, the world where people embrace the cultures with caring hearts and address the global crisis as a whole. Thank you. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Whenever someone says Taiwan, reactions range from, oh, I love their scenic views and street food, to, is that a country? To, oh, you mean Thailand? Unfortunately, they seldom have the chance to visit and truly understand this alluring island. To us, a country's culture is what makes it unique and irreplaceable. Thus, we designed a three-day-long Taiwan Day, which can be held in almost any country, where we shall exhibit the cultures of the past, present, and future. Day one, the past, legacy of Austrian nations. To comprehend the culture, one must begin from its roots. As we know, Taiwan is the birthplace of the Austrian nations, a group of people that has spread to Southeast Asia and most of Oceania. The bloodline of this ancient race still flows through the veins of our Aboriginal tribes and some of our neighbors today. Therefore, we will begin our introduction with the Dao tribe, an isolated branch of Austrian nations on the island of Orchid. For our activity, a Dao elder will be invited to give a once-in-a-lifetime lesson on the uniqueness and significance of each and every craft, and will also lead the decorating of a full-fledged Tatawa, sea-worthy boats. After a talk, our foreign friends may board the vessel they have personally painted and take it for a spin around the sea. When everyone returns, we will reward them for the hard work with the most popular Dao snack, flying fish jerky. Finally, the young members of the tribe will demonstrate how to do the warrior dance. This way, our presentation will be off to an energetic and unforgettable start. Day two, the present, a hike in modern Hakka. On our second day, we shall embark on our journey through present-day Hakka, the culmination of century of experience and adaptations. Hakka is the second largest ethnic group in Taiwan that mainly occupies the hills of the West. In Taiwan, they have developed many customs, festivities, and of course, mouth-watering delicacies. This is the day we showcase the best of Hakka. We will first teach them how to make the prepare umbrella which is made to blessing for burying children or a symbol of wholesomeness. After the productive work comes Hakka cuisine. Traditional lei cha or ground tea is must for deluxe Hakka experience by grouting tea leaves, coarse rice, wild ginger, and other ingredients together, then boil it in the water. The participants will explore and finally understand the bittersweet taste of life in Hakka world. Day three, the future, transversing technological Taiwan. On the final day of our exhibit, we shall present the innovative and technological side of Taiwanese culture. A brilliant blend of the past and the present, the future of Taiwan is destined to blaze in all its glory on the globe stage. First, we would harness virtual reality. VR is a budding technology that will influence our future daily lives, economy, and many other aspects. This day, it will whisk us off to witness the mirror-like, peaceful beauty of Sun Moon Lake and the breathtaking vastness of the Taraco Gorges. Through VR, 
participants could view any world-renowned destinations in Taiwan from the safety and comfort of their own country and need not spend any extra expenses on transportation or accommodations. As the sun sets, all grows lazy and quiet, yet we still have one exciting event up on our sleeves. Rejoice and applaud as our incomparable dancing group, Cloudgate Dance Theatre Foundation, presents everyone with a fabulous performance that features the combination of modern lighting tech and Taiwanese history. What could be a better finale to our Symphony of Taiwan than a demonstration of sculpting our art through art? We cannot evaluate Taiwan by its size, just as we cannot judge a book by its cover. With the grit and perseverance of our ancestors in the past, and the creativity of the modern generation, we're striving for a future of infinite possibilities. Not only does Taiwan Day let our foreign friends get to understand us, but it also brings us together by making us reflect what it means to be a true Taiwanese. Once we identify exactly who we are, we can harness our every advantage and construct a better future together. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning! The constitution of the WHO clearly notes that the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being. However, the political intervention has kept Taiwan from being the official member that being said, Taiwan has never given up making contributions to global health. For example, to connect Taiwan with global healthcare, a Taiwanese NGO called Taiwan International Health Action, also known as Taiwan IHA, was founded in 2006. It aims to effectively manage medical force, facilities, and resources. It also helps enhance medical treatment in developing countries and provides humanitarian aid whenever natural disasters strike. Apart from this, Taiwan IHA also offers medical training, equipment, and resources to developing countries and promotes medical cooperation among these countries. Next, Watson will talk about more Taiwan's contributions to global health. Thank you, Carrie. Compared to other countries, Taiwan was ahead of the curve when it comes to treatment for rare diseases. Thanks in large part to the Taiwan Foundation for Rare Disorders between 1999 and 2009, Taiwan built a very comprehensive environment for the treatment of rare diseases and created a national structure for dealing with rare disorders. Whether in terms of legislation, social welfare, how rare disorders are defined, or experience with clinical treatment. Taiwan has become a model for nearby governments, such as Hong Kong and Indonesia. What's more, Taiwan has a long history of putting international efforts to prevent epidemics and provide humanitarian aid. In other words, Taiwan has been an important participant to prevent, monitor, control, and treat infectious diseases. Taiwan has also demonstrated its good global citizenship through humanitarian efforts, both within the Asia Pacific region and around the world. Next, Savannah will talk about Taiwan's critical strengths in getting membership of the WHO. Thank you, Watson. In terms of Taiwan's strengths in global health, it is well known that Taiwan was among the first eight governments to employ the WHO's international health regulations in 2005. This set a positive example for the entire Asia-Pacific region. Taiwan was also the first in Asia to implement a national health insurance program, which has a coverage rate of 99.9% .9 of 23 million citizens. These achievements have shown that Taiwan is ready and willing 
to share its national health insurance success with the international community who are struggling with this challenging issue. To obtain widespread support in the international health community, I consider it necessary to strengthen the bond between public sectors and NGOs. Since some Taiwanese NGOs, such as Ciji or Taiwan Root Medical Peace Corps, have been offering medical help and humanitarian aid worldwide. By doing so, Taiwan's medical strength can be seen in the international community. This, to some extent, allows Taiwan to gain global support for taking a seat in the WHO. Next, Anna will conclude our speech. Thank you, Savannah. Taiwan has proved the world its dedication to health issues at both local and global level. Therefore, I think it is morally wrong to deprive us of our fundamental health rights, to share international health information, as well as the prevention of epidemics. We must be aware that virus infection knows no borders. Only when every member of the international community is included, the negative effects of potential pandemic outbreak will be minimized. Through Taiwan's participation in a WHO, we will be able to share valuable experience with other countries, acquire information on diseases, and play a constructive role in global and regional health protection. I believe this will create a win-win scenario for Taiwan and the world community. Thank you. Number five, Good morning, dear judges, ladies and gentlemen. In the past, Taiwanese achievement of economic development was on account of the hour, strategy which corresponded with comparative advantage. In consequence, time played a role in manufacturing products in light industry in Asia. However, with the rapid evolution of technology, based on the disadvantage of population, time should be the place where technicians come. There are two aspects on the new South Bank policy that we can progress in. Sure. Thank you, Josephine. First, what we need to improve is the institution of the education. With a view to attract more overseas Chinese to come to Taiwan, we can hold an event which can provide an opportunity for those who live in Indonesia, Cambodia, Vietnam, etc. to talk about their desires and fulfill their goals. Furthermore, we can establish a manager of foundation to raise up funds and let enable the children live in poverty to come to Taiwan to acquire knowledge. In addition to assist the students from South Asia to South Asia to communicate with Taiwanese in Chinese, we can hold, we can launch a specially Chinese class for students to learn Chinese. In that way, what we do is not only bridge the gap of communication but reinforce the friendship between each other. In turn. Thank you, Sharon. Second, we would like to discuss the backstory of policy. In 1980s, the high-tech industry started to be paid more attention. Accordingly, Taiwan has had been devoted to develop the high-tech industry. Therefore, now, nowadays, Taiwan has occupied most experts of semiconductor in Asia. As a result, Taiwan is the place which has phenomenal potential to attract high-tech people. Nonetheless, the renewal of salary cannot correspond with the speed of inflation. This situation contributes to overwhelming loss of manpower. In this situation, we can propose subsidy for Southeast Asian staff. For example, we can plan out a public housing dwelling at a low price. So our policy, we can ensure their right of abode 
and avoid being homeless from proliferation. Stanley. To sum up, with a view to following the pace of global economy, <coughs> new southbound policy is the way that can truly help Taiwan get rid of economic depression. Despite the fact that we are merely students, we still can spare no effort making Taiwan a better place, even if what we can do is just give a piece of advice. There still are multilateral <coughs> policy to bloom, which can bloom Taiwan's economy and diplomacy. In consequence, the way to real success is tough. Yet, as long as the public have the will to build a better tomorrow, it's never too late that the perpetual interaction with Southeast Asia blossoms. Wow. Thank you for listening. As the dawn of globalization draws near, new media has played a more and more important role in promoting diplomacy. Good morning, honorable judges. On May 12th, the Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan just finished their dance piece from Mosa in Germany and then they would continue on their journey to Austria, Italy, France, and the UK. This production from Mosa brings allusions to the history of Taiwan, its wildlife, and people. The dancers perform like liquid gold, along with the projections of Taiwan's stunning landscapes and Aboriginal tribal music. In two hours, the audience gets a glimpse of what Taiwan is like visually and audibly. Not from old and traditional media, newspapers and magazines. We are trying a new means to market Taiwan so that more people notice the existence of Formosa, the beautiful island. Now, let's welcome my teammates to elaborate. Annie? Thank you, Claire. Different from traditional media, New media, with its fast spread speed to the world, has played a more and more constructive role to promote diplomacy. By utilizing the global media system, we can make our country look more attractive and friendly for the foreigners, while also setting the stage for other nations to understand our positions in the international arena. What is more important, the effect of such media activities can be maximized when combined with cultural programs. And furthermore, it can also be used to promote peace, harmony, mutual understanding, and cooperation among citizens with neighboring countries in the same region. What do you think, Melody? I completely agree with you, Annie. Through new media, the gorgeous valley and Taroko is no longer a poster on the wall. Combined with dance, calligraphy, and Aboriginal tribal music, a shift to an art on the stage. In 1996, the song Return to Innocence, sang by the Ami tribe, had been played as the opening anthem at the Atlantis Olympics. Through YouTube, the heart touching, beautiful melody was broadcasted to the world. Under the lens, the treasured notes of our aboriginals were showcased worldwide with pride. And on the stage in front of the temples, Taiwanese opera singers and globe puppets are interpreting the life in Taiwan in the most local way. By giving thumbs up or leaving comments, you can encourage the people in the clubs and the filmmakers to continue to do a better job. What do you think, Julian? I think that's a great idea, Melody. Thank you. The main difference between traditional media and new media is the method of communication between the audience and the producers. The inherent weakness of traditional media is that it can only offer a one-way communication, where the audience can only receive information and not have the ability of providing feedback. 
whereas new media provides a more enhanced and interactive experience where the audience can not only receive information, but also have the ability to comment and give advice to their producers. On the other hand, this new two-way communication is playing a more and more important role in addressing public opinion, as the younger generation tends to utilize new media more often than traditional media. The most important thing about new media is that it can offer countries that may not have traditional communication channels a chance at interacting with the modern world. Back to you, Claire. Thank you, Julian. As an island of technology, we have no lack of high-tech hardware, but definitely more materials should be uploaded and updated onto the internet more frequently. Not just Cloud Gate Dance Theater, but Ming Huayuan Arts, two percussion group, other art groups, and YouTubers. They are trying their best to make Taiwan seen on the territory of the new media. Now, it's time for us to say hi to the world through the new media, communicate with netizens, and embrace, embrace the world. world. Thank you, everyone. When it comes to a health issue, it is undoubted that Taiwan has an impeccable and reliable healthcare system. Honorable judges, dear teachers, and fellow students, my name is Julian. As an observer of the World Health Organization, Taiwan is struggling to gain support and eager to have a place in the World Health Organization officially. To reach our goal, we must demonstrate our merits and contributions to the world, including cutting-edge technology, cutting-edge surgical techniques, volunteers from medical organizations, and building strong medical connections with the worldwide nations. Now, let's welcome my teammate Jacinda to give you a more elaborate explanation of the topic. Thank you. When it comes to Taiwan's contribution, volunteers are absolutely the prominent aspect. Siji Foundation and Doctors Without Borders, two international charities, have assisted people all over the world in the medical field. For the former, whenever there is an accident, Siji Foundation is the first to come to aid. Volunteers provide various medical care. For instance, doctors once went to Nepal to, to, to provide medical help for the local victims that survived an earthquake and also unite with the doctors from Nepal to help the pregnant woman deliver twins. As for the letter, Doctors Without Borders is composed of some distinguished Taiwanese doctors. They devote in saving refugees and reducing poverty. One of their targets inclu includes rebuilding the local post-war medical system in the jungle of Liberia, West Africa. With them bringing medical treatments across boundaries, we, as Taiwanese, truly rekindle hopes for the local people. As we all believe, Taiwanese medicine will lighten up your lives. Now, let's welcome Mandy to explain more. Hello. To improve the superlative medical skills we own, the video, A Perfect Pair, depicting the true story of a girl in Vietnam who overcame cystic lymphing geoma can best illustrate the point. The girl in Vietnam suffered from Suffer, experienced years of unsuccessful treatment in Vietnam, so ensure she could obtain high quality medical treatment for such a complex operation, the family thought for aid from Taiwan. In 2012, she flew to Taiwan and underwent some intricate surgeries. Against all odds, the doctors overcame all the difficulties and provided the girl with a new life. In 2017, she was given a pair of free customized shoes from Taiwanese company to fit both her leg. With the donation and medical assistance from our country, she indeed started a new chapter of her life. In such a case, it is obvious that Taiwan does contain high quality technology in the medical arena. With us joining WHO, the expert in Taiwan could share their experience and technology, which can help to solve all the medical problems all around the world. Now let's welcome Kathy to elaborate more. Thank you, Mandy. To elaborate on our global connection in medicine, two aspects can be depicted. First of all, the United Nations announced Sustainable Development Goals, 
which concerns good health and well-being. In order to curse now the objective, Taiwan has set up international health action and professional projects like setting up a resident medical team. We provide advanced technique to those countries in need. Secondly, according to the US, U.S. program, eradicating fatal diseases such as malaria is one of the course. We have, been, have made a lot of efforts in such issues. Take Lian Ching, Taiwanese scholar, for example. He devoted his time in prevention treatment, and he successfully decreased the number of children who suffer from malaria. Because of this, it is obvious that Taiwan are well connected with worldwide nation, and we have the capability to provide marvelous medical help. Now, let's back to Jillian. In conclusion, Taiwan, which is a country with advanced medical technique, is qualified to have a place in a World Health Organization officially. With our exquisite medical skills, enthusiastic volunteers, and our involvement in international affairs, we should try our best to display our values and contributions in the public health to the world. We are confident that Taiwan will be acknowledged by the international communities and thus play an influential role in the WHO officially. So, when will be our time to shine? Now, Taiwan, we can! Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. New media play an important role in education, economy, as well as diplomacy. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and other social media platforms are deeply intertwined with our daily lives. With the progression of modern technology, new media, in particular, accelerates the spread and the exchange of information. Here, we would like to highlight what roles new media play in the field of diplomacy. First, let's welcome Alice. Thank you, Wen. First of all, I would like to create a video game. The setting of the game will be based on Taiwan's Shaolin Green Energy Park. The project features green applications such as wirelessly charged buses, self-sustaining buildings, and even vehicle-mounted solar panels. Research activities at the park focus on the development of solar, biomass, and offshore wind power technology. So, in my video game, I'll create a character using these features as weapons to fight against the issues caused by global warming like extreme weather, climate refugees, and deforestation. During the game, players from around the world will not only learn how our green technology works, but realize that Taiwan is fighting for the environment and for the good of all. Oscar? Thank you, Alice. I would definitely play that game too. Utilizing the newest technology, I will design a virtual reality adventure through the Xueba National Park. Through the VR goggles, participants will be surrounded by spectacular scenery, lush green mountains, crystal clear rivers, and towering trees. In addition to the breathtaking views, players can also find the Formosan landlocked salmon, one of the most famous and unique species in Taiwan. Players have to remove the obstacles against the survival of the fish such as habitat loss or man-made pollution. Most importantly, participants will learn how Taiwanese have made extensive efforts in the recovery of endangered species. By venturing through the national park, our friends from around the world will not only be impressed by the stunning landscapes, but appreciate how Taiwan spares no efforts to preserve our mother nature. What do you think, Kelly? Thank you, Oscar. VR sounds like an amazing idea. I believe a mini film focusing on our cultural diversity can draw everyone's attention on the global stage. Since the 17th century, Dutch, Spanish, Japanese, and Chinese immigrants have brought their cultures and lifestyle to Taiwan, which has diversified and enriched our society. 
by posting the mini film on social networking platforms like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. People can see Fort Santo Domingo, which includes Spanish gardens, British roses carved in brick, and the southern facing gate based on Chinese feng shui. Or even sample a Taiwanese twist of delicacies from around the world. For example, ake, originally a Japanese delicacy, has now been adapted into the Taiwanese style and has become a local must-try snack. The mini film will show the world how Taiwan embraces and respects different cultures while fusing the elements into a unique kaleidoscope. Back to you, Wayne. Thank you, Kelly. As you can see, new media can help us promote diplomacy in various ways. Video games show the world how Taiwan can contribute in solving the global problems with our green technology. Virtual reality allows for instant and intimate encounters with Taiwan's natural beauty. And many films vividly depict how Taiwan has embraced diversity and made it into a unique fusion of cultures. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is getting smaller, but through the power of new media, Taiwan is getting bigger and stronger. Thank you.